My name is Lisa Naylor, and I am the MLA for Wolseley and the official opposition critic for environment and climate change. That means that in addition to doing whatever I can to improve life for folks in Wolseley, addressing poverty, housing, mental health, and education, it's also my job to shadow the government's conservation and climate minister. It's my job to ask her questions during daily question period in the legislature, and I would be first up to question her and debate her on bills pertaining to her department. It turns out that with a historic 68 government bills introduced into the legislature this session, not a single bill was related to environment or climate change. This government is overhauling education, eroding rights for workers, and introducing all kinds of law and order legislation, but they're completely ignoring climate change. At the same time, the minister has said through the media that she is working to balance the needs of both sides, which I take to mean those of us on the side of science and on the side of the future for our planet and those who would deny climate change. The minister has also said that it's really up to individuals to make behavior changes and educate their neighbor. At the same time, her party continues to fight the federal government in court to end the carbon tax without introducing any adequate carbon pricing plan for Manitoba. The current federal plan does not penalize low-income Manitobans. Pallister's plan, as usual, rewards big business and those with big incomes. This government's climate plan is not a plan since it does not include any meaningful targets or timelines. At the end of 2020, they still had only spent a fraction of their own budget in this department and had spent only 10% of $64 million allocated by the federal government three years ago through the Low Carbon Economy Fund. I'm not sitting back like the minister. I'm honored that I was assigned this important critic role, and I know we are running out of time. I know that Manitobans want to do their part, and they also want a government that takes the environment seriously. I've spent the first 18 months in this role learning all I can about legislation in Manitoba and across the country, building relationships with stakeholders, and researching effective climate policies in other parts of the world. I'm excited about the NDP's developing environment and climate policies. We are building a vision of a clean energy future with good jobs and an electrified transportation system. The NDP caucus knows the meaning of teamwork and addressing climate change requires cooperation and consensus with other departments. That's why I'm working closely with our hydro critic, our agriculture critic, Northern MLAs, and of course, the indigenous members of our team. I'm confident that we will be ready after a 2023 election victory to meet internationally acceptable greenhouse gas emission reductions while also addressing other concerns to Manitobans, such as the health of Lake Winnipeg, keeping provincial parks public, and introducing policies that help protect our trees, including our urban tree canopies. While I had no specific environment bills to debate this session, I did speak out against Bill 57, the critical infrastructure bill, because it could prevent climate strikers, environmental activists, and Indigenous land defenders from standing up for our planet. We've been able to delay this bill for six months, so I encourage all of you to make your feelings on this bill known to the government. As always, I love to hear from constituents. Please reach out to my office with your concerns or feedback. Please stay safe, and I look forward to gathering with you in person when it's safe for all of us to do so again.